On the phone right now, we have a witness to the seventh bombing, which happened at a hotel near a zoo. Acela Wydilankara joins us now. She is just south of Colombo. Uh, Acela, tell us what you saw. Hi, yes, we were watching the uh, news telecast of the uh, uh, blast that, that, that happened in Colombo. And suddenly, uh, near my residence, we heard uh, a strong sound of an explosion. So I rushed up to my rooftop to observe what was going on. And I observed the smoke belching from a location about one kilometer or less away from us. This is the, the closest landmark is the National Zoo of Sri Lanka. And uh, we noticed uh, within a few minutes, there was a helicopter that, uh, that approached the location to do a sweep. And then uh, within a few more minutes, uh, we could hear ambulances and fire trucks coming into the area. So we, at that moment, uh, realized this was probably a larger, larger attack in connection to the chain of attacks that we witnessed. Uh, incidentally, so the news wires picked it up and uh, they said that two people had died in that particular explosion, as well as, uh, you know, it was part of, uh, connected to part of the explosions that were, that were happening in Colombo and other areas. How far have you been able to get outside the area where you are? I mean, what have you been able to see? Uh, well, it's a little difficult because usually what happened is immediately after the seventh blast, within a space of 30 minutes, there was a there was a firefight uh, in another area called Demetakoda, which is another Colombo suburb. And uh, police initially said the curfew was in force from 6 o'clock in the evening till 6 o'clock in the morning for tomorrow. But then they revised that, saying that the curfew was in force immediately and indefinitely. So that basically we were advised by law enforcement not to step out of our houses and to remain indoors. So, Asela, we know that the government has shut down access, we're told, to sites like Facebook and Instagram. So where are you getting most of your information? Is it coming from uh, television, radio? Uh, we are switching back to, unfortunately, mainstream media, uh, because uh, usually I think most of Sh urban Sri Lankans now consume their news from either social media or uh, or the or, or basically social media, uh, Facebook to be exact. So, but right now the government has uh, basically blocked Facebook's daughter companies, so Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, as well as Viber. So those are the popular messaging and social media platforms in Sri Lanka. Uh, so those are completely uh, not reachable at this moment. Uh, however, some citizens are using VPNs to circumnavigate the block, but then uh, still, it's a little difficult to, to communicate. So you're reverted back to traditional local media channels for news and information. Asela, I want to ask you, um, we, our hearts are broken uh, for all of you there. Um, I, wonder, I wonder what your reaction is to what happened. This is absolute grief and shock because uh, we, we, we had a bad terrorism for the last 30 years. And actually next month, it would have been 10 years of, of complete peace in this country and no incidents. So we as Sri Lankans are shocked and heartbroken, but yet uh, we will persevere. And then my mind harks back to the time when uh, the National Blood, uh, Blood Service said that there was a shortfall of blood uh, basically, there was an outpouring of people to the National Blood Center to give blood, so much so that uh, they had to turn people away. Mm. And I think that speaks to the character of this country. Indeed it does. Asela Waidilankara, our thoughts, our hearts are all with you. Thank you, for, thank you for the time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much.